continue the procession bearing the regalia on foot, covering a distance of three kilometers around town at a significantly slower pace in order for everyone to capture that moment, to take out your phones and <laughs> take pictures with the, of the newlyweds. Of course, since they have been assembling since six in the morning, this is a very, very highly anticipated event. I'm pretty sure they would want to just catch a glimpse of the royal newlyweds. You know, my question now is, you know, they've what been lighting on the streets at six in the morning whether your battery will sustain. I hope they brought their power banks. <laughs> <laughs> now we have power banks these days. <laughs> of course, it'll be uh, okay for them. And also, uh, I'd also like to share on the final phase mm. uh, that will commence from the fire station up until Istana Nuru Iman for another 3.1 kilometers. If I'm mm. not mistaken. Um, yeah, you can see the, the cars uh, just as equally long as what we will be seeing today. So this has always been the norm for for the royal couple, uh, for the royal newlywed couple, to be followed by by members of the royal household. So mm -hmm. this is this is similar with with all the other events which have had happened in the past. Yes, and also, Dr. Rosa, I'm pretty sure, as well, that the royal procession is a tradition that has been long preserved. Uh, so I would also uh, like to know, in the royal procession itself. What does it actually signify? Does it have anything to do with uh, MIB or any of that sort? <laughs> no. it's, it's always been that. I mean, remember that you know, we've only had landed vehicles from the early, uh, from the beginning of the 20th century. Mm -hmm. Before that, we didn't have it. Uh, so that means we have had not had that many processions. But processions are actually not um, in the sense that it is not automatic. It is not. It, when you have a royal wedding, you have a procession. It's, it's actually you no. Know, it depends on, depends on what was decided at that point in time. So we can look at it from from even from the wedding of the sons and daughters of His Majesty. Uh, we I think we had we had the crown prince and um, His Royal Highness Princess Rashida and, and Princess uh, Majida, Jida. but we didn't have it for the others. So this is sort of a return back. To tradition, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. other reasons. It could be logistics. It could be all sorts of other things. Mm -hmm. But since this is not, this is not a compulsory part of the wedding. So, I see. so it is. It is in that sense still optional. So when we have it, we have it. When we don't have it, then it doesn't really matter because it is not a part of the of the royal wedding mm -hmm. uh, event. You can see now school students also uh, lining up the streets outside the palace, and the royal regalia are out in full force. Uh, this. Morning. Mm. They're taking a lot of time. It's 11:58 a.m. on a Sunday here in Brunei, 14th of January, 2024. And uh, I guess you know the weather seems very promising today. Yeah, uh, of course. Very sunny, uh, but also very, very promising. And I think I would also like to share once again uh, that the royal procession is about 9.2 kilometers long mm -hmm. and should take about an hour and 46 minutes. Uh, looking at that, just a while ago, just uh, drove past is uh, another royal regalia, the Changka, brought by the Pate and Damong as the head of the royal parade. Uh, the, this regal implement uh, resembles a double edged spear. Uh, also, also, there's uh, Fo Dian Bunga? Yes, Fo Dian Bunga Dian Tunggal, uh, which is a candle that precedes the arrival of the royal family at a ceremony, Ooh, royal. whether it is held in the day or at night as well. And the candle is always lit and <laughs> is carried by Awang Awang for men and also for Dayang Dayang. Little ways for everyone here at the palace. He's a very, a really achieved young royal. Oh, he's... he's, he's um He's, he's like the modern face of, of of the royal family, if you can look at it that way. I mm. mean, not saying that you know it it, it is the the you know in the in today's generation where the younger generations are into IG into, into IG TikTok and so on. Correct. So he's, he's, he's <laughs> social uh, media. Yes, the social mm. media. Yes. Uh, so you can you can see that, and he's got a he's a very, he's got a very large following. I think I think it's about in, in which. Which I think numbers in the million. I think. Correct. Mm, yeah, so reaching one, millions. Yes. Well, the oh. union of these two souls sees the comp compatibility of this royal couple in every aspect, uh, be in the arts, be in sports. They they do sports together. Oh yes. Uh, bringing them together uh, to a new beginning as king and queen of the day. <laughs> <laughs> we are celebrating them today, the royal newly wed couple, and as we can see at the moment, the motorcade. Uh, paving the way for the royal procession. And also I think it's for memory keepsake as well. Yes. Um, of course, the, the, right at the entrance 
uh, of the palace, Istana Nur Iman. Heading down to this uh, jalan, this street is the Jalan Raja Istri, yes. Yeranak Saleha. Yes, yes, yes. Previously, uh, Dr. Rosan, this street was known as? This, this street was part of the long street which stretches all the way from um, the, 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 the big lamb, uh, sorry, the, the, the big clock that we have there, mm -hmm. all the way up to Tutong. It used to be, used to be called Jalan Tutong. Mm -hmm. But now Jalan Tutong starts at the end of this road, which is at Talanai. Uh -huh. So this road is, has, has been renamed in honor of Her Majesty, Jalan Registry Perana Nak Saleha now. Look at, mm -hmm. Amazing. I mean, look at the, the, the students now. They're actually carrying uh, beautiful balloons, balloons hard drops, yes, yes, hard yes. team. <laughs> we have that's, the hard drops team. Yeah. I think I, we've also been informed. Oh, they're waving now. Yes. Uh, we've also been informed over 40,000 school students joining yeah. in the royal procession. That's a lot today. of people on the, on the streets. Big streams. number. In fact, that those balloons, I would consider that a change from tradition because we, I don't see, I, do, I don't think we saw that before. Mm. So Previously, I think we have the waving flag. That's right, right. Yeah. So now this balloon, so it's more a joy. It's, it looks a very joyful occasion now. Very colorful. Yes, yeah. very very colorful, a joyful occasion yes. for everybody to celebrate. We can also see they're very very radiant yes. with love. If you realize, one hand's on the camera, one hand's waving. <laughs> <laughs> I, I that don't... is how it is in 2024. <laughs> I, I think this is the trend. With the balloon, I don't know how they can hold the balloon. Uh, balloon <laughs> and the phone answer. at the same time. <laughs> this is of course the Awa Awa carrying the snippet. Yes. So you can see all this, all the, oh my god, look at the number of cameras. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> For the Awa Awa carrying the snippet, this type of spear and timing, yeah. a type of shield and uh, Let's talk a little bit more about His Royal Highness. Now, His Royal Highness Prince Abdul Martin, he was born on the 10th of August, 1991. Uh, he's the 10th child and the 4th Prince of His Majesty. Mm -hmm. uh, His Royal Highness is well educated, he's refined, uh, and of course... I think at the moment he's uh, <clears throat> also in the military, so it's also good for us to be able to have him, um, to be able to also meet you know, uh, the, the leaders of mm -hmm. the other countries as well. I think uh, if you look at the previous uh, engagement which we have was between uh, Brunei and Singapore, where he and and, and the future uh, Prime, Minister. Prime Minister of Singapore, Lawrence Wong, Mr. Lawrence Wong, so they had a good rapport in that sense. So, so this is something which augurs well for Brunei because we we are a very peaceful country. So we are we are able to maintain close relationship between us and other countries around the region and around the world. So this is important for us. Mm -hmm. So at the moment, I think we can see the forty awang awang carrying the snippet, snippets, yeah. a type of spear and taming, a type of shield decorated as well with a red. Pisang, Pisang flag. Now, His Royal Highness Prince Abdul Martin has always been very interested in the military field. So uh, he actually shows readiness in, to venture into this yeah. area since a very, very young age. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at uh, some of the pictures uh, he, from a young age, His Royal Highness exhibited a deep fascination uh, with military affairs and has actively participated mm -hmm. and attended various events related to the field. And I'm sure His Majesty, uh, falling in His Majesty's flee in the sense that they've actually opened up the back of it. Yep. So, mm. and, and, and one of the things which, if I could just set track a bit, is that the previous vehicles were actually um, sort of, um, you know, uh, intricately, but this is more modern. In other words, we don't need those intricates, intricacies and so on, but it is still functional. In other words, this is, this is, what, this is what, in some sense, what this vehicle and this wedding is showcasing, that, you know, we can still do this, but we can do it at, at a much... Uh, more conservative, traditional mm. manner. Correct me if I'm wrong. Back yeah. then, I think was it was it a it's like a mounted. Seat it is. It is onto a, yes. a model kit. That's that's what that's what I first when I first saw the car just now when it was at the entrance of the palace. There will be a seat which is on top mm. of the back seat. Correct. So there'll be there, that's where they'll be seated, and there'll be actually a canopy, canopy on top of. Yeah. But in this case, because of the, you know, I don't think there were. We, we, we probably looked at how the weather was going to be like, Correct. so, you know, so... And this is why they had to stand in some sense. Mm. Uh, because otherwise, if they're seated, they're sort of lower down. Yep. And it's good also for, for them standing, because when you think about it, this is noon. Mm -hmm. You know, this is quite... This is right at the... At the you know, it, can, it cannot be any, any, any less, you know, 
any any hotter than what it is now uh. and by standing and by by they are they are they're showing solidarity with all the people with her, yep. which are actually there. So this mm. is this is amazing. This is a, a very good ex example of, of uh, you know of of uh, his uh, of his royal highness and and young young have this such lavish weddings mm. you know anymore. I know even back in the days for the weddings of the citizens, uh, they would have separate days for separate events. For yes, example, right, yes. today would be for Majlis for Buddha, right, tomorrow yes. would be Nika, and the next mm. day would be uh, Bersan Day. Yes. But these days, uh, sometimes they can all just combine yeah, it in right, yes, a yes. single day. Yes. Uh, so I think we can also see, you know, the how how the ceremonies evolve over Love time them, as yes. well. And uh, seeing from where we are at the moment, uh, the royal procession today, about 176 uh, are from the Royal Brunei Armed Forces joining RBAF, mm. and 93 joining from the Royal Brunei uh, Police yes, Force, yes. and also 217 from various involved parties. Now, um, His Royal Highness was nurtured with religious values as seen through the attendance of His Majesty's uh, and members of the Royal Family Religious Seminaries. We are going to pass by uh, uh, the Sri Begawan Religious Teachers University College, Kupu SP, in just a bit. And uh, just a little bit about Kupu SP for the benefit of our viewers uh, from abroad. It was established on the 20th of January 2007 following His Majesty's Tita. University College or the Kupu SP? So, Everyone has been talking about the attire, attire, and attire. Uh, Dr. Rosen, the traditional attire worn by the royal family members and guests may, ha may have distinctive features such as the colors, the designs, the category, or status of each people who wear them. Does these variations of designs or ownership have any purpose or story behind them? Um, not really, in the sense that these are all traditional uh, Malay dress, if you call it, or baju Melayu in this sense. Mm. That, uh, and uh, the citizens nowadays, we hardly wear the, the dastara, ah. of which now the headgear, of which you can mm. see now the royal family, actually most of them are wearing the headgear. Mm. So for most of us, uh, we had to wear the, probably the headgear if there is a special occasion, like when we got married and so on. But in general, we just wear the songko. So this, this is probably... Um, to 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 uh, they are actually show, showcasing what we call the Brunei culture in that sense. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, if if you look at the vehicle, um, you can see His Majesty's vehicle with a flag, which is about two cars behind, yep. and all the others. And that would be interesting also to see the sequence of of you know who and who are in the vehicles. Yep. Yes. Um, also, as mm. well, I think this royal procession gives a chance for the audience Definitely, and also yes. for the crowd, especially Bruneians, members of the mm. nations, and also tourists coming from different oh, yes, countries. Uh, because we have also known that there's a surge in hotel bookings right, right. <laughs> because they want to <laughs> have a closer look on the royal newlywed. Yes. Uh, so they have an overnight stay. Yeah. And, uh, they have booked this way in advance. I tell way in advance, mm. of course. Uh, we have also seen the uh, article as well, how the hotels have been booked in the yes. capital, uh, just for them to see. So I think this can really strengthen the bond between uh, the royal newlywed couple and also in them showing the appreciation uh, to the crowd that's mm. been joining. So my question is, um, since it has been always historically conducted in a number of ceremonies, uh, from social culture perspective, how does this procession ceremony reflect the relationship between the royal family and also the public? Okay, um, <clears throat> I think one one of the best examples that that I could give was when His Majesty uh, was celebrating his fiftieth anniversary of ascending the throne. Um, he's of course very popular, not just here in Brunei but also you know abroad. So yes. uh, you can see a number of uh, social media posting uh, about him. Mm. So this he he is he is he is sort of the 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 epitome or the face of mm. the modern. Uh, a royal family. That's why I also agree with Dr. Rosa when he said uh, Prince Abdul Mateen is really uh, the face of the modern royal yes, these yes. days. Uh, not only does he has a large following oh. on social medias, uh, but as well I think because he's very highly skilled and he yes, has right, those yes. qualities of a prince. I mm. think that really catches the attention of people oh, yes. and I think that's <laughs> very, very inspiring yes. as well. Uh, so looking at where we are now, 
still going on. High noon. Yes. Mm. So His Royal Highness Prince Abdul Martin, uh, who's always endeavours to give his best for the country, just like his father, yeah. uh, who's a caring monarch, uh, the attentiveness and the warmth of His Royal Highness towards the community and the country demonstrates his nobility and virtue, expressing concern for the people's welfare. Uh, his Royal Highness's attendance at ceremonies and events always display his positive charisma. As you can see right now, even looking at him right now, yep. giving that positive vibe, uh, charisma. Special engagement overseas as well. Uh, in support of strengthening diplomatic ties between Brunei Darussalam and also other countries as well. Mm. We are still at Jalan Raja Istri, Pingra Anak Saleha, and uh, very, very close by is, of course, the uh, Ripas Hospital, with the Raja Istri, Pingra Anak Saleha Hospital, situated on a 42 acre site. It's about uh, 0.8 kilometers from the heart of the capital, Bandar Sri Begum. When we say how did the capital is from that clock? How are That's we right? Yes. That's actually a very new information that I just yes. learned from Dr. Rosan himself off camera. Maybe Dr. Rosan can share yes. a little bit. We want to talk about, yeah. you know, everyone told us do... Batu Satu, Mal One, Mal Two. How did they all come about? Yeah, interestingly enough, there used to be a Mile Zero, which is just outside the general post office, mm. just, just outside of the clock tower itself. Mm. So everything was measured from that. Place. So that's mile zero. So Batu Satu is actually mile one. So which is one in you know, pre 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 metric. Mm -hmm. We were using the British system. So this is mile one, which is one point six kilometer, but mile one. So this was this area is now known as Batu Satu. Ah, so that's why. That's why when, when, when people say I'm at Batu Satu, I was yeah. wondering where is Batu Satu and why is it called Batu Satu. Yeah. Now we know it's because Batu Satu it is the mark of the distance. So are we talking? about at the Istana, is it mile two? Istana used to be known as Batu Dua, ah. which is mile two. Okay. In fact, if if the, there is actually, the, if you go further along Jalan Tutong, there used to be a kampung called, uh, there used to be a village, three villages called Kampung Batu 18, Kampung Batu 19, and Kampung Batu 20. Wow. But we don't have that anymore these no, days. Uh, no, the, the three kampongs have been combined to be Kampung uh, Sungai Kelugos, I think. Oh. But you know, but imagine naming a kampong after how how far away <laughs> you are from town. You know. Just imagine if you're all the way in Kuala Blight. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You, you, you kampong Batu <laughs> and also off air as well, Dr. Rosan has shared about how people do the simpang. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So maybe sim it's, yeah. it's a very it's very interesting. Maybe you can share yeah, with okay. our audience. One, one of the interesting ways that you know, like I said, you know, Bruneians are good even at designing, at designing <laughs> you know, all the <laughs> and we're good also at, at giving addresses. So, Simpang Satu would be basically uh, ten meters away from where it starts to be measured. So mm. Simpang Do will be twenty meters. Simpang Tiga will be thirty meters. So that's how it goes. So this is why sometimes. That's why sometimes you see numbers, uh, you see Simpang Satu, you see Simpang, and also it goes even, even, even uh, the even um, it branches out. is, is yeah. on the right side yep. and the odd number is on the uh. left side. Um, so sometimes you might see Simpang Dua, and then you don't see another Simpang, then until the next one Simpang, you see Simpang Correct. Ten. No, because, because there's nothing in between. So uh. in other words, Simpang Ten is 100 meters away from the beginning where it's the, the start to measure. Uh. Uh. So, you know, so if there's nothing in between, yeah. So mm. this is we don't mark it just because one simpang is two, the other one is three. So the difficulty. Just yeah, think of it yeah, like that. it doesn't work like that because it goes by num it goes by distance. Mm. Yeah. And moreover, like for example, <coughs> simpang eighteen dash twenty three. Yes. So dash. what is yeah dash? So, so what, what is it actually? So signify? that means that means it's a branch of that simpang twenty eight dash ten dash fifteen. That's two hundred eighty meters away from the first one. You know, 15 meter, 150 meters away, and then. I just meters know away. it's yeah. far <laughs> from the dash. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to bring my measuring tape right after this. <laughs> the uh, the newlyweds are now at uh, just outside the Attorney General's chamber uh, that was established by the Brunei Constitution back in 1959. Just close by is the Supreme Court. Uh, was the subject of an architectural competition that the government held back in 1978. Yes. Mm -hmm. And also Sungai Kedai to the East and Jalan Tutong to the north border, uh, the building's chosen location. location and the building's construction started in February 1981 and was finished a couple of years later in 1983. And the structure itself cost about $20 billion. 
dollars to construct and has about 96,500 square foot floor place. And the Supreme Court Buildings ribbon cutting event took place back in 15 March 1984. When the country uh, gained its independence. Uh, we're going to go through after the courthouse, Dr. Razan, is a little small bridge. Yeah. Why is it named the Edinburgh Bridge? Is it Edinburgh Bridge? Yes. Um, well, the original bridge actually is called the. Mm. Uh, there is another smaller bridge here, there, which is which is uh, they call it Jimbatan Rangas. Mm. Mm. Oh, the original name was actually Jimbatan Clifford. Ah. Uh, but that was small. You can actually, if you're heading towards town, you can actually see it on the left, on the left hand side. Yep. But that was replaced by this newer bridge called the, the, the Edinburgh Bridge. The Edinburgh Bridge was built because of the visit by Duke of Edinburgh. Ah. Uh, I, I cannot remember what year it was. Mm. So, so that is now taking place of instead of of the Rangas Bridge uh, mm -hmm. so or Clifford Bridge so now the Edinburgh Bridge the Edinburgh Bridge was actually just built with two lanes uh, with two lanes but at, when they widened the road so they've actually built another bridge next to it but it is still also called of course obviously the two bridges are now still called Edinburgh Bridge mm. <coughs> yes I think that is uh, an information learned uh, for our audience as well uh, who are watching the royal procession still taking place at the moment and still on phase one. That's Go right. Heading on to phase two shortly when they reach to Banda Street Gun Fire Station. You can see, you know, schools taking this opportunity to showcase the, the, the <laughs> names of the school. <laughs> <laughs> All prepared for this day. Yes. Very, very. Uh, I, I believe this is from the Chinese school. Uh, also taking this yeah. opportunity. When he's with his father, especially mm -hmm. in the visits to the districts and so on, uh, he can actually, you know, he, he's very patient. He, if people want to take selfies with him, mm -hmm. he'll, just stood there, he'll just stand there and, and, you know, and he'll be happily uh, accommodating them. And that, that's, that's something which many people do not realize here mm -hmm. about Brunei is that just how close the, the, the royal family, especially His Majesty, mm -hmm. to the Rakyat. So, <clears throat> and and he goes out every Friday, and he goes out whenever he does have his official visits. And the rakyat would be, if there are any complaints or anything, they would be handing their letters directly to him. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't you don't get to see that in many other countries. So mm -hmm. you know, so yeah. His Majesty's office actually deals direct with the welfare of his people. So this is what this wedding is trying to showcase. That this is you know, this is us. This is Brunei. This is what we look like, you know. So even though we have this, uh, I mean, we, we are embodying the philosophy of the country, the Melayu Islam Raja or the Malay Islamic Monarchy. Mm -hmm. So we can see that this is what's happening here, uh, being portrayed live, you know, to everybody outside the, the world. <coughs> yes, and I think if there is a term for that, I think. Yeah. So in other words, there is this relationship the, the, between the Rakyat and the royal family as well. We can, we can hear the music right now yeah. uh, uh, as we are on the second phase. We just, at, uh, we just arrived at the Bandar Srivigal Fire and Rescue Station located at a very busy intersection and also very close by to where His Royal Highness Prince Abdul Martin studied in his early education at St. Right. Andrew's <laughs> School. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. We are now on phase two of this royal procession taking place. To the opening of the this is the very first ceremony which we actually saw on the eighth on, on the eighth of of uh, no. so the, it's uh, gendang gendang uh, is 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 like a small orchestra mm. so the orchestra denotes that you know uh, something is taking place you know so this this is what we and they've actually moved that. Uh, that that orchestra onto a small vehicle, <laughs> so yes. the, uh, which we unfortunately we can't see it here. I wish I wish they would show it that here. I think we'll probably uh, get a glimpse yeah, of it so a bit later. There will yeah. be there will be the header of the, of of what it's all about. Yep. So uh, can can we see it here? Is it possible? Not yet. Okay. So that is uh, one of the most important function of what it is. Uh, the other things are all the various equipment being carried by, by all the Hawaii uh, as well as that equipment Case. which 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 puts those powders mm. in so that's one uh, we've used that as a tradition now um, so there's actually a gun uh, of course the other side would be the more traditional 
yes. a more, more traditional uh, weapon, which is the spear and, and the shields. Yep. Mm -hmm. so, but these all, this are all significant because they are, they, are, they are the tradition, the culture. Of course, we don't use them anymore. Of course, obviously, probably you know, hundreds of years ago, these are actual weapons being used. Mm. But now these are just royal regalia. But mm. it still showcases what the country is True. looking like. So this, this is you can see all the people in red. You mm. know, with, with mm. all the shield, with all the uh, with all the spear. Actually, Spears. that's a spear. It's, yep. not, it's not. It's not a flag, except that when you put a flag on it, you know, it, just, it, it looks, looks like a spear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's why I think I believe that the what's used in royal procession, uh, they they carry very aesthetic values that have that's existed, right. uh, that have been existent since the ancient times, yeah. and this really just showcases the skill of the people of Brunei as well in crafting and mm. shaping carvings with symbols that represent the monarchy and also the Brunei identity. Um, if our viewers can take a closer look at some of the uh, labels for the simpang, um, so we have, for example, Jalan Stoney, mm. we have the Jawi mm. translation to That's it. Right, yeah. So yeah. for those outside of Brunei, probably they would question, is it mandatory for every single thing to be translated oh, yeah. to Jawi? Uh, but I, I wouldn't call it a translation. It's actually the words written in, mm -hmm. in, in Jawi. Mm. Uh, it, it is, in that sense, a way for us to maintain the Malay culture by having signboards uh, written in Jawi as well as in the what we call the Romanized uh, letters. Mm. So um, the rule has always been, if it's in Jawi, it should be one and a half times larger mm. than the normal. Oh, really? So that's, that's what has been done, yes. So you can see if you look at the road, if you look, you can look at the road signage. Not just the road signage, even, even the shop signage, even right. the, you know, um, anything that has a signage. It should by right a person comes over to your house or visit your house, mm -hmm. you offer them betel nuts. So this, this is this is always so. Now it is not not many people. I, 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 can't, I, can't, I can't remember anybody eating betel nuts anymore. Is betel nuts pinang? Yes, yes, ah. pinang. Uh, it is. So, that, so that's what they do. So nowadays it becomes a mark. So mm. even 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 in the in the even in our in in the normal citizens wedding where you have that sirai junjung, mm. yeah. sirai junjung actually would be the tobacco leaves and so on. So it still signifies the same. So it's actually you do that at the beginning of every. So it's just a cultural, it's a cultural uh, thing which we, which people do. Mm. So but it marks it marks welcome. So in fact by right. Um, you know, when we do cultural performances and so on, the first thing we do actually is to do the dance with the with the uh, with the pinang with the betel nuts. Mm. Military band uh, of the Robbery Night Armed Forces and the police band of the Robbery Night Police Force for the 11th uh, the festi festive atmosphere this afternoon on a Sunday here in Brunei. Renditions of Malay wedding related melodies, <laughs> songs of the yesteryears. Uh, I mean. Yeah. Used during the real right procession back then, how was it like? Ah, uh, I, I, don't, I don't think the songs have changed that much in terms of what we use for marching and so on. Um, the, but of course, in the in the modern era, we have other songs being played, you know, um, over the radio, over the TV, and so mm. on. But the marching songs are almost, almost, almost exactly the same. So, you know, if you've listened them when you you've listened to them when you were young. <laughs> they, they, they probably sound the same because mm. that's what, what they keep on Very playing. nostalgic feel that's right, to yes. it. Yes. And also right now the royal procession is heading towards the Royal Regalia, Regalia Museum. Museum. That's right, yes. And as the name suggests, of course, uh, the museum showcases a selection of Royal Regalia uh, of His Majesty the Sultan and Yandi Pertuan of Brunei Darussalam from his early childhood years up to his coronation day in 1968. Also off-air, uh, Dr. Rosani also shared with me and also <laughs> Alex Frank as well. Uh, it used to be Churchill's <coughs> memorial building. Winston <coughs> Churchill. Mm -hmm. <laughs> back, back in the days, uh, before that building was demolished and replaced with this one, uh, <clears throat> what happened is that there used, there used to be three museums, there, not just one. So one of them was commemorating the life of Winston Churchill, yeah. the former Prime Minister of uh, Britain during the Second World War. But it also housed the Constitutional Museum. It also housed 
uh, the only aquarium that we had, you know. Yes. Uh, and so that was that was the, the the most interesting thing. So when you're a small boy, you know, uh, fishes is is very low. So yes, you used to have several different museums, so not just not just the Churchill Museum. Mm. You had to take a photograph there with the. Winston oh Churchill yes, ball. yes. Yeah, uh, with the sign. Yes, I still yeah. have that picture. <laughs> <laughs> yes. They used to have a bronze statue of him outside the building. Mm. Yeah. We just drove past the Lapao, uh, which is the Royal Ceremonial Hall, where the Mambuka Ganda Jaga Jaga took place on the 8th of January, uh, earlier this month. And usually state investiture or some state events are traditionally held here at the Lapao. Uh, it was the place where the present Sultan, Sultan Haji Hasna Bokia, was crowned in 1968. Yes. Yes, and uh, right now we are at the Brunei History Center, and of course, if you're a, a history, huge history, history buff, buff <laughs> uh, this place is definitely not one to be missed. Uh, more of a research center than a museum, the Brunei History Center first opened on 26th January 1982, and it houses all the key artifacts and historical records of the history of Brunei and Borneo. They visit Brunei, especially the, land the landmarks. landmarks. Yeah, yes. uh, they get to have further in-depth information of what the place is about so that is what the digital audio is for coming in five languages on the screen on your right is of course the general post office which we did talk a while ago mm -hmm. and on the left is the uh, old secretariat building which now currently houses the headquarters of radio television brunei uh, of course you're watching live the royal procession marking the royal wedding ceremony of his royal highness Prince Abdul Martin and Ya Amat Mulia Pengira Anna Estri, Anisha Rosna, Binti Adam this Sunday afternoon. My name is Frankie. I'm with uh, Nadira and yes. also our special guest today, Dr. Rosanne. That's true. And for those who are watching us, thank you very much. And you can also uh, watch us from RTB Go app. Uh, because today's event is carried live uh, over RTV Aneka, RTV Perdan, and also RTV Sukma Indra. Looking right there, we were talking about the clock tower. <laughs> That's where <laughs> the meters... The start. The start of... The start, mm. the start of mile zero, yes. <laughs> yes. So that can be a reference for our viewers uh, on the topic that we talked about. Yes. Mm. That is the start uh, marking the capital of mm. the city. Exactly. So one mile away from that clock tower is the Batu. And now we're here at a very, very significant uh, landmark or, or place where, of course, we... Um, historical site for Brunei where we declared our independence back in 1984. Yes. This year, we're going to be celebrating 40 years uh, of uh, na our National Day on 23rd of February and today it serves as a large view used for uh, festive occasions like uh, Malidu Rasul, National Day celebrations, his Majesty's birthday and so on. And includes a group of gardens designed to commemorate the change of the city's name to Bandar Seri Begawan and provides beautiful views of the Omar Ali Saifuddin Mosque. Now this is actually the heart of uh, the capital Bandar Seri Begawan we're looking at. Yes, and still we can see the many crowds joining, consisting of not just the government servants, but also uh, school students and also ones from various institutes as well. Very eager, very anticipating, just to catch a glimpse of our royal newly wet this Noon. We all know that he commenced training at the Mi Royal Military Academy Centre at the age of 18. Uh, he also pursued his further studies at King's College London, United Kingdom, His Royal Highness Prince Abdul Martin. Mm -hmm. Attained a Bachelor of Arts degree with honours in international relations and equipped with the drive and determination to learn. His Royal Highness then pursued a Master of Arts degree in the International Studies and Diplomacy at the School of Oriental and African Studies, University of London, United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. So upon completing his studies, His Royal Highness shifted focus towards his military career and began the elementary flying training on number 200 elementary flying training course at the Royal Air Force RAF in 2016 to 2017. Now His Majesty presented His Royal Highness with the RAF pilot wings in recognition of his accomplishment of becoming a fully qualified pilot just like His Majesty the Sultan himself, uh, res resolute in his pursuit to equip himself as a military member with calibre, His Royal Highness also enrolled into the aviation uh, philosophy. Uh, 
fee course, as well as the 61st Basic Military Free Fall course in 2019 in the Republic of Singapore. I really don't know how His Royal Highness can really do all this. Really, it's really amazing. I think, I think that's why we can call him a very, very highly skilled prince. Very impressive traits that he has. Uh, also very determined as well uh, in order to, you know, uh, be able to be highly skilled in, in such areas Not well. just, you know, for armed forces, but also military and in terms of Air Force, aircraft. He actually performed a jump from an aircraft during a special operations parachute training as well. That's amazing. Um, throughout his military career, His Royal Highness was promoted as? Second Lieutenant and Substantive Lieutenant in 2011 and 2012, respectively. So upon completing various training courses, His Royal Highness was then promoted as Captain in 2017 and as Major in 2021. Now we've been talking about military, but His Royal Highness also, also has a very strong interest in sports. Mm -hmm. uh, he has demonstrated uh, through various athletic pursuits, including football, boxing, skiing, tennis, as well as playing musical instruments such as drums and guitar. Very impressive. And in any sport he participates in, His Royal Highness exudes passion, determination, talent towards a sport, whether it be a training competition or charity matches. Yeah, so I think it is no surprise, of course, knowing this, that His Royal Highness grew up to be a sportsman and has been uh, very good at riding horses since childhood. And uh, did you know His mm -hmm. Royal Highness' personal sport of choice is polo? Do you know why? <laughs> of, of the military life, you know, mm -hmm. you you fight wars through horses and so on. So of course, one way to be to excel in it would be to play polo. Mm, so that's, that is that's why. Uh, uh, also, uh, His Royal Highness horse selection is Polo Argentino. Yeah. Ah, and it is uh, in line with his very competitive spirit in polo, which he considers a very challenging sport. Uh, as well, His Royal Highness has shown an unwavering commitment and consistent enthusiasm towards the sports of polo, <coughs> seen through his participation in a match with His Majesty Sultan Haji Hassan Abokia Muisaddin Wadawla Ibn Almarhum Sultan Haji Omar Ali Sakuddin Sa'adul Khairi Wadin. We can hear the cheers. the cheers, the excitement from the crowd. <laughs> I think because they've been uh, very eagerly anticipating this. We're, at, and we're talking morning. about we're in the heart of the capital. You can see that the crowd is not just on the, uh, ground zero, but they're also uh, on buildings. That's right. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why they're looking above and giving a wave as well. Yeah. <laughs> now, His Royal Highness has also uh, taken part in competition, not just locally here in Brunei, but also overseas. He represented Brunei in the 29th Southeast Asian Games, the Sea Games in 2017 in Kuala Lumpur. We're just uh, crossing now over to Jan MacArthur. MacArthur, yes. And uh, this is the place where the... Brunei Energy Hub Dermaga di Raja is. Uh, so the Brunei Energy Hub Dermaga is located uh, in the capital city, Bandar Sri Begawan, and it is an interactive museum that aims to serve as a knowledge hub for the oil and <coughs> gas industry. It is uh, one of the attractions for the tourists as well because when they visit the museum, it is not just them looking but also interacting and learning. With, yes, and learning with uh, what is displayed in the museum. In one of the galleries downstairs, they, they will change from time to time. I, I, I guess recently they had this exhibition on Kambaya attire as well okay. Yes, uh, from various countries in uh, ASEAN. Now, His Royal Highness is definitely a prince of the heart of gold. Uh, His Royal Highness is also active in charitable endeavors, uh, notably through his involvement in charity sports in support of those in need. Mm -hmm. And His Royal Highness' involvement during these events is a reflection of his dedication to lighten the burden of those who are less privileged. Also, I and should take about an hour and 46 minutes. His Royal Highness serves as a source of inspiration for the younger generation. I guess not just the younger generation. Mm -hmm. I think my generation, Dr. D Rosan's generation, <laughs> uh, are alike. <laughs> I, for everybody, uh, for us to work together towards a more peaceful, integrated and united Brunei. Mm -hmm. that's right. If that's a little bit about His Royal Highness, I think we'd also like to share uh, about uh, young Ahmad Mulia, Pianana Istri, Anisha Rosna, uh, Binti Adam uh, as well, a little yeah. bit shortly after. Yeah, so we are now uh, at the uh, area where the Yayasan Sultan Haji Hasna Bolka complex was.
one stage, uh, we used to hold the the national Quran reading competition there. So yes, the I readers would that. actually yeah. go there, and people would be seated right at, at where the staircases, you know, um, next to the lagoon and so on, watching the readers. So, but we stopped. Very interesting. Yeah. But back in the days, right? Yes, that's right. Yeah. So we people go there. So that means the readers would actually have to cross <laughs> to to that barge, read, and you know, so. They're very, very, very yeah. interesting. That is the that is about the Sultan Bolkiah Maliga replica barge yes. that is uh, floating on the man-made lagoon. And this symbolic barge uh, commemorates traditional Quran reading competitions, and uh, it is located at the other side of the mosque. And also, uh, this area has a long marble path going to the water village Kampung Ayer. Yes, yes. um, I think in Kampung Ayer itself, since uh, probably we have tourists watching, what is uh, interesting or what can they visit in Kampung Ayer itself other than, you know, seeing the floating houses? There's a lot of things in the Kampung Ayer. Kampung, the, when you think about it, Kampung Ayer was the, the place where Bruneians used to live. So even until today, we, you know, the, 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 the kampongs or the villages are well equipped. They have its own fire stations, it has its oh, own mosque. schools, mm. it has its own mosques, it has its own clinics. So it's actually, you can actually technically live on, on the kampong yes. without actually venturing on land. Um, in fact, that's what happened. In some of the, some of the kampongs became the center. You could actually mm. get uh, shops and so on. But nowadays, you know, as things become less, so they actually feature quite a number of other things as well. I mean, there's actually a few couple of restaurants, uh, popular yeah. ones as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've seen. So you know, so yeah, it's 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 something worthwhile for people to visit, mm -hmm. just to see what it's like to live on on water. Yes. Still you know, yeah. And yeah. I think what was interesting, I just figured out very recently, there's a fuel station. That is, that is, that is, that is a few that was my first time um, yes. seeing it, and I think that's very interesting. And I can very much agree to what Dr. Mm. Rosen has shared. Uh, people can actually do live, mm. you know, uh, by their houses if on we, the floating water. If you ask the, some of the residents of Kampong, they actually prefer uh, staying on water. Then, then <coughs> I think it brings back uh, sentimental values, maybe uh, memories as well. Uh, according to Bonnie Blitin, our national press. Up to the 1960s, there were actually people who have never actually ventured on land. Mm. So that, that's, you know, up to the 1960s, there were actually people who have never really stepped foot on land. They've been living on water throughout their life. So that, that's, 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 you know, that's how traditional the Kampong Air is when you mm -hmm. think about it. One stage, uh, we used to hold the the national Quran reading competition there. So yes, the I readers would actually yeah. go there, and people would be seated right at, at where the staircases, you know, um, next to the lagoon and so on, watching the readers. So, but we stopped. Very interesting. Yeah, but yeah. back in the days, right? Yes, that's right. Yeah. So we people go there. So that means the readers would actually have to cross <laughs> to, to that barge, read, and you know, so. They're very, very, very yeah. interesting. That is the that is about the Sultan Bolkiah Maliga replica barge yes. that is uh, floating on the man-made lagoon. And this symbolic barge uh, commemorates traditional Quran reading competitions, and uh, it is located at the other side of the mosque. And also, uh, this area has a long marble path going to the water village Kampung Ayer. Right, yes. um, I think in Kampung Ayer itself, since uh, probably we have tourists watching, what is uh, interesting or what can they visit in Kampung Ayer itself other than, you know, seeing the floating houses? There's a lot of things in the Kampung Ayer. Kampung, the, when you think about it, Kampung Ayer was the, the place where Bruneians used to live. So even until today, we, you know, the, 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 the kampongs or the villages are well equipped. They have its own fire stations, it has its own mosque. schools, mm. it has its own mosques, it has its own clinics. So it's actually, you can actually technically live on, on the kampong yes. without actually venturing on land. Um, in fact, that's what happened. In some of the, some of the kampongs became the center. You could actually mm. get uh, shops and so on. But nowadays, you know, as things become less, so they actually feature quite a number of 
other things as well. I mean, there's actually a few couple of restaurants there, uh, popular yeah. ones as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've seen. So, you know, so yeah, it's, it's, it's something worthwhile for people to visit, mm. just to see what it's like to leaf on on water yes yeah. Yeah. and i think what was interesting i just figured out very recently there's a fuel station there is, the there is, there is, there is a fuel that station. was my first time um, yes. seeing it and i think that's very interesting and i can very much agree to what dr mm. rosen has shared uh, people can actually do live mm. you know uh, by their houses if on we, the floating water if you ask the, some of the residents of Kampoi, they actually prefer uh, staying on water <laughs> then, then <let's laughs> i think it brings back uh, sentimental values, maybe uh, memories as well. Uh, according to Bonnie Blitin, our national press, up to the 1960s, there were actually people who have never actually ventured on land. Mm. So that that's you know up to the 1960s, there were actually people who have never really stepped foot on land. They've been living on water throughout their life. So that that's 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 you know that's how traditional the Kampong air is when you mm. think about it. So back yeah. then, not even them venturing on land. That's right, yes. 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 Very, very uh, interesting historical fact to know. Passing by the Sultan Omar Ali Saifuddin Mosque. Named after the father of the present Sultan. Uh, named after the 28th Sultan Yang di Pertuan Brunei, which is Omar Ali Saifuddin Sa'du Khariwaddin. Yes. The architect of modern Brunei. Yes. And the design of the mosque uh, incorporates local touches like the rope-like pillars, uh, recalling the Brunei kalat, or what we can call as a thick rope, and a replica of the 16th century Bruneian mahnikai, or what we can call as the royal barge on the reflecting pool outside of the mosque. Uh, so now passing by the Sultan Omar Ali Saifuddin Mosque uh, that is located in the heart of Bandar Sri Begawan, just uh, capture its position as the nation's icon. And the oldest mosque. The oldest mosque. In Brunei and the country's landmark. So when you bring your visitors or tourists to Brunei, uh, this is definitely not to be missed. Uh, picture. And uh, that's actually a big frame just out at that's the right, yes. Eco Park. <laughs> they can very take a popular picture now. From, that's right, yes. Is, is that frame supposed to like capture the mosque? The mosque? Well, the way it's positioned, yes. mm -hmm. you know, I think, I think that's a very, the good, idea. Uh, yeah, the very good landscape mm. for which you can utilize to frame your photo, technically speaking, <laughs> you know, so. We're here at Jalan Masjid Omar Ali Saifuddin and uh, we're also passing by now the central police station uh, that is located here in the heart of the capital, Bandar Sri Begawan, very next to the Sharia court. Yes, mm. and the royal procession today taking place 14th of January 2023, corresponding to 2nd of Rijab 1445 Hijra. The Brunei police band uh, and of course, and the other members of the band are playing the music, uh, leading the way for the parade to continue on. Yes, because it's going to be about 9.2 kilometers long. As well, if you can see uh, the different buildings as we go through this royal procession, um, they're hoisting the national flag. Mm. So actually, all the citizens and also the residents of Brunei Darussalam are required to hoist the national flag starting from January 7th all the way till January 16th. 16th. <laughs> That's right. Uh, just for the royal wedding ceremony that's taking place in this period of time. So you see all the different types of cameras are out in full force. Uh, of course, members of the royal family are also part of this royal procession, including their majesties and their royal highnesses. And uh, this Sharia court area used to be a hospital. That's right, yes. <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken. That's right, it is. It, Back is. In it, was, it was. Many years ago. <laughs> uh, before, before the Ripas Hospital is built, so all the, the entire area was, On your right, uh, was yeah. the hospital. Mm. So where we can see all the car parks and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, at that time, the, the hospital was just one level. Mm -hmm. So that's why it was sprawling all over the place. Ah. So that's the reason why. So it was quite easy to visit, visit you know, the hospitals in those days simply because you can just walk in. You know? <laughs> oh, so, back in the yes. days. <laughs> As well, we can see medical tents are also being set up.
can see over there. And also, this ceremonial event will not just be witnessed by the country's citizens and also the residents, but people from all around the world yep. can watch this live broadcast of the ceremony at all RTB channels and also RTB Go. So on the right and left, uh, they are being flanked by high-ranking officials from the Royal Brunei Armed Forces, uh, the Commissioner of uh, the Royal Brunei Police Force, and a group of 14 senior officers from the Royal Brunei Armed Forces and the Royal Brunei Police Force. Uh, they are accompanied by the Royal Carriage and, of course, their Majesties. Mm -hmm. The procession on foot will end later once it will reach the Bandar Sri Brown Fire Station. Now, some of the royal regalia that's uh, been carried by foot right now as we speak are seven chosen men, seven chosen female, each carrying the puan or silver vase, tarian and uh, a silver vessel used to hold flowers, kabok then panasta, which I'll talk to Dr. Rosan about this about a bit later. About it's a water container and a accompanying tray, mm -hmm. kiap the fan, uh, and uh, that displays holy, the holy verses from the Al Quran. Chupu or the ornamental vase. Yes, and we have pasigupan or smoke pipe, and kaskol or chest used to store beetle nuts and is wrapped with the jong sarat yellow silk. And this is uh, followed by dian enamblas or 16 ceremonial candles carried by 16 awang awang, while 16 dayang dayang together with awang awang bearing the royal regalias that is. 16 pedang dan perisai or swords and round shields, 16 tumba bendarangan or spears and 8 kabo and panastan or water container and accompanying tray. So Dr. Rosan, we were talking about kabo and panastan, the water container and accompanying mm -hmm. tray. Is it usually used only specifically for the royal wedding or any Malay wedding? It's, uh <clears throat> well, the Malay weddings don't use those, obviously. Uh, a lot of these things actually started from practical uses. Mm. So, in the old mm. days, remember, even even the palace was on water. So, you know, even, so back even then? the palace was on water. Even if you look at old photos, uh, the palace of the of the 25th Sultan of Brunei, Sultan Hashim, was actually still on water. It wasn't until uh, his son, Sultan Muhammad Jamal al Alam, and, mm. and, the, and the sultans downwards uh, actually moved on land. So a lot of these things are actually, in terms of ceremonial usage, they were actually started from practical usage. So that means you, just like when we first saw uh, Prince Martin at the very beginning mm. of the wedding, so they actually like, pour a kettle of water on, onto his foot. Yeah. So of course, obviously, in those days, you know, you step through mud, you step through everything, so washed. And similarly, some of these things which we do, which they're carrying, like the pasikupan. Pasikupan is just a, it's a pipe which people mm. smoke, mm. you know. So it's, it's Brunei word is sigup. Mm. Sigup means so pasikupan is yeah. just. And of course, with all everything, with all the betel nuts, with all the, with all the uh, tobacco leaves and so on. Mm -hmm. And the rest of it will be just water. So some of it is used for washing, some of it is used. So this becomes ceremonial rather than. Uh, I mean, you know, change over from using it for practical purposes mm -hmm. to, to using it for traditional uh, cast, uh, what we can see of today. Oh. So we don't use that obviously for the for the citizens' wedding. Uh, we stop using a lot of these things. You know, I think the only thing mm -hmm. left for the no, the non-royal is normally the the siri junjung. Mm -hmm. Which is what people carry. Even that, that quite a number of people don't do anymore. Oh. So all these things now become part of the royal regalia. So this is what they're carrying. So this become part of the things which they indicate that this is belongs to royal and so on. So and more, very more important is that this is showcasing our culture at its best. Yes, right. And, and that's something that you can never have. True. So a royal wedding is always a good place yeah. to have good memories and a good place to showcase what, what whatever things that you need to show in, in your culture. Yes, mm -hmm. especially that this uh, particular royal wedding ceremony has captured the global attention